The purpose of this video is to go over some key skills that you're going to need in the polynomials unit. Um, so the first thing we're going to do here is just go over some key terms when looking at a polynomial um, and classifying them. So I'm just going to quickly go over the two examples here. So the first polynomial we see here is 3x plus 4. So the number of terms, so each term is separated by an addition or subtraction. So we can see here that there are two terms. 3x is one term and 4 is the other. So that's why I have the number of terms labeled as 2. And so whenever there's a two-term uh, polynomial, we call this, another name for it would be binomial. So the prefix bi, just like in bicycle, there's two wheels. Bi means two, so binomial. The word polynomial, by the way, the prefix poly means many. So polynomial is more of like a general term to describe any of these. And then if we're specific, specifically saying binomial, it means it has two terms. Now the degree is the largest um, exponent on one term. So uh, in this polynomial, the x actually has an exponent of one. Um, we don't write an exponent of one there, but there is technically a hidden one. So the degree of this polynomial would be one. Okay, let's have a look at the next polynomial. So we can see there are three terms, one, two, three. Remember each term is separated by an addition or a subtraction. Um, so we call this a trinomial because tri means three. So three terms. And we see the largest exponent here is a two. We can see there's an x squared term. So that would mean the degree would be two. Okay, let's do uh, two more together and then you can try the others on your own. So the next one here would be a binomial again because there are two terms. And the degree is three, the largest exponent we see there is three. Okay, and then the next one here is a two term polynomial again, so another binomial. The degree would be four, the largest exponent, and the number of terms is two. Okay, so you can try the rest on your own, um, and we're gonna move on to adding and subtracting. This is gonna be a key skill we need throughout the unit too. So when we're adding and subtracting terms in a polynomial, we look for something called like terms, things that have the same variables and the same exponents. So I'm just gonna highlight the like terms in the first example here and show you how we got the answer. So we can see that there are three terms with a C and then two constant terms, which are just numbers. So we can add the coefficients together on these like terms. So seven minus five plus three would be five. And so that's why we ended up with five C here. And then five plus two, of course, is seven. So that's why we have seven. We cannot add terms that are not like terms together. Um, okay, so let's look at the next one. So we have 4m plus 8m. So 4 plus 8 would be 12. So we have 12m all together. Highlight that in yellow. And then the two numbers here are the are constant terms. 9 minus 3 would give us 6. So we have plus 6, positive 6. Okay, now even if the, ter the like terms are out of order, we can still add them together. So for example here, we have uh, two terms with an x, 3x and then just negative 1x. Oops. Sorry. And then we have two constant terms, 5 and 10. So we'll end up with 2x, 3 minus 1 is 2, so 2x and then 15. Now let's look at the next one, it's a little bit different. So when we're looking for like terms, we need the exponents to match as well as the variables. So k squared and k are not like terms. So we have two matching k squared terms here. We have a k term that doesn't match with anything. And then we have two constant terms again. Okay, so we're gonna have three terms in our final equation. Um, but let's look at the k squared terms first. Typically you would write the higher powers first. So eight minus five is three. Negative 10 minus, or sorry, I'll do the negative 20K next. There's no like term, so we just write it down. 
and then the negative 10 and negative 30. So negative 10 minus 30 would be negative 40. Okay. Now let's move on to the next set of questions here. These are a little bit different. So we're subtracting two polynomials and they're in brackets. So what this bracket means is we're gonna subtract everything in that bracket. So another way to think of it is, is the negative sign is gonna to apply to both terms there. So we're gonna subtract 3a and we're gonna subtract four. So we could rewrite this. So a lot of students will be able to do this in one step without rewriting it, but I'm gonna rewrite it for the first one. So negative, or sorry, 10a plus seven minus three a minus four. So essentially it changes the sign of each of those terms in the bracket. Um, okay, so uh, again, we're gonna group like terms. So we have 10a and negative three a, so that would equal seven a. And we have seven and minus four, so negative three. Okay, I'm gonna do one more and then you can try the rest on your own. So here, this subtraction, remember, is going to apply to both terms inside the bracket. So another way to write this would be 4b squared plus 12b minus 3b squared minus 5b. Okay, so again, we're going to collect like terms. So we have 4b squared minus 3b squared. 4 minus 3 would be 1. And if the coefficient is 1, you don't need to write it down. So you could write 1b squared, but in the answer key, Typically, we wouldn't see that. We'd just see b squared. And then we'll add the b terms together. 12 minus 5 is 7. Okay, so you can try the other two. The answers are at the bottom of the page. Multiplying polynomials. So we have, uh, when we multiply polynomials, we need to multiply the um, numbers together and also the um, variables together if they match. So in the next example here, we'll have two times three, which would be six. And B and C are different, so we're just gonna write B times C. And when you're writing multiplication, you don't have to write any symbol, you can just simply write the letters and numbers next to each other. So this says six times B times C. Okay, so here we can multiply these numbers together. Four and 10 would be 40. And the D and D squared, so that would make three d's all together. So it'd be d cubed with a power of three. Okay, and then the next one here, three and five can multiply together to make 15. We have one x and another x, so that's two x's multiplied together. And we have just simply one y here. Okay, so remember we're multiplying everything here, so we're not adding, um, we are multiplying. Okay, so we're not gonna end up with like multiple terms. All right, and finally, distributing. So when we're multiplying a number or a polynomial by something that has more than one term, we need to multiply every single number by that. So I'm gonna look at the first example here. We are multiplying the polynomial x plus three with two. Okay, so the two is gonna need to get multiplied to the x term and to the three both terms inside the bracket. So that's what the bracket means. It means everything inside that bracket is gonna be multiplied by the two. So here we see we had two x, and then two times three is six. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing here. I'll do this one example with you, and then you can try the other two. So this would be negative 10y, and negative five times negative nine would be positive 45. You have to pay attention to the terms that are in front of each number when you multiply. So negative five is multiplying with negative nine to equal positive 45. Okay, so you can try the other two there. And finally, dividing polynomials is similar to multiplying, um, except the terms are gonna be, or you're gonna reduce them. So for example here, x to the power of five divided by x to the power of two. If you write this out sort of the long way, this would be five x's on top and two on the bottom. So essentially two get canceled out, so you're left with just simply three. So that's why the answer here is x to the power of three. You can also remember back to the exponent laws and remember when you're dividing two exponents with the same base, you subtract the exponents. Okay, so here again, we're gonna divide the numbers. 12 divided by four would be three. And m squared, which would be m times m, divided by m, cancel out one of them, you get m. Next one, 16 divided by four is four, 
and then the k's actually cancel out completely here so we'd have nothing left so just four next one negative 30 divided by 5 would be negative 6 and then x cubed divided by x so again you can visualize it if this helps one of the x's gets cancelled out and you have x squared left over. You can also subtract the exponents. This one has an exponent of 1, so 3 minus 1 would be 2. Okay, and the last one, a little bit trickier because we've got multiple variables here. So 25 divided by 5 is 5. Now here with the x's we have x to the power of 4 minus 1, so 3. One of those x's is going to be cancelled out. And then for the y's we cancel out 1 as well, so it would be y squared. Okay, and last thing, we're going to be dealing with perfect squares a few times in this unit, so I just wanted to review what perfect squares are again. So a perfect square is a number that can be um, written, uh, multiplied twice by two other numbers to get to it. So another way of thinking of it is if you have that number of objects, you can arrange them into a square. So for example, 9 is a perfect square, because if I had 9 objects, I'm going to just draw them out here, I can arrange them into a square shape and that square shape would be 3 by 3. So 3 times 3 is 9 um, and I can arrange those. In. So an example that would not be a perfect square would be for example 6 because if I have 6 objects there's no way to arrange those objects into a square shape. I would only get a rectangle since 2 times 3 is 6. So that 6 is not a perfect square. Okay, So perfect. there is a nice pattern to it. Perfect squares between 0 and 100 essentially would be 1 would be the first one because you can do 1 times 1 and then the next largest would be 4 since you can do 2 times 2 and then 9 which we already mentioned and then 16. It's good to start recognizing these they are going to pop up in your next math courses as well. We're going to use them a lot over the next few years in math. There's lots of patterns that come up with perfect squares. 25, 36, so these are the only perfect square numbers between 0 and 100. 49, 64, uh, 81, and of course 100. Okay. Um, yeah, so just I just want to mention those because they're going to be coming up. Okay, and that's the end of the lesson.